Okay, I wanted to show you how to run a check disk on your system. Um, going to show you a couple ways. One, if Windows is already <clears throat> if Windows is already running, if I can talk right, um, you click on your start button, and you can go to run. Uh, if you don't have that run option you can basically hold down the little windows key on your keyboard it's going to look like that little microsoft flag logo there and then uh, press your r button and it'll bring up the run dialog and you can type in here cmd and this will give you your command line and you're going to see that the uh, c drive uh, is most likely going to be your operating system uh, everything on it, and it's probably what you're wanting to run a part um, check disk on. And what you can do here is so you want to type into the command line here chk dsk space your drive letter in this case is going to be c the colon, and then there's a series of options you want to apply here. First you have slash F. Uh, that's going to go through and fix errors with the file system. If you run it without slash F, it runs in read-only mode, which will you know, take 15 minutes or whatever to go through and basically tell you, hey, you have issues. You need to run it with slash F to fix them. So if you just want to see if you have issues and not actually let it fix it, you run it without the slash F. Okay, the next one is going to be slash R. This one's going to go through and actually test the blocks of the hard drive. Uh, with slash R, it will take much longer to actually run the disk check. Um, you're probably looking around 45 minutes to an hour, maybe more, depending on how big your hard drive is, how many files you got, all that stuff. And finally, because we're going to be checking the C drive uh, which we do know is going to be in use um, I like to specify the slash X option and that basically forces a dismount of the drive but since you can't dismount the C drive it basically tells you hey it can't do this uh, would you like to schedule it up for your next restart so once you specify all this good stuff you press enter and you get the message I was just saying it's in use by another process would you like it to be scheduled next time your system restarts you'd say yes press enter and then restart your computer uh, in this case I'm going to say no because I don't actually want to do that because I need to show you another way of doing it and you know you just go through restart your system after that uh, next thing uh, another way you can do it is just go into your my computer and you can right click on the drive go to properties and you have a tools tab here and under there you have error checking hit check now and basically here's the same options we had before automatically fix file system errors that's our slash f option and scan for an attempt recovery of bad sectors. That's our slash R option. Uh, that's the other way you can do it. You basically just check those, hit start, and you're going to get basically the same kind of messages as I said before. So that's one way of doing it. And now let's say your system doesn't start up anymore. Um, if you see my other video on uh, why Windows might go through and get stuck in a reboot loop uh, and you go through and tell to disable automatic restart and you're getting the unmanable boot volume message means your file system is probably just corrupt and just needs a fix uh, so what you want to do is use something like the ultimate boot CD which I'm going to go ahead and mount using my uh, VMware Workstation. I'm going to use a physical ISO file. And we're going to go to 
E drive, and we're going to go to here. Okay. And basically, what I'm doing is equivalent of putting in the ultimate boot CD uh, physically into computer. And we're going to restart the computer. And I got another video on how to set up uh, your system to boot from a CD. So you want to go through, configure your BIOS for all that stuff, or do the quick uh, boot menu thing. And what should happen here is when you restart your system, you're going to get the ultimate boot CD options and go through start up um, normally just like a normal boot CD launch ultimate boot CD and I'm gonna let that load up okay just like before uh, we're going to do a command line once we're in our ultimate boot CD so we want to go through and go to start go to command and just like before it's the same thing uh, you just do the check disk C because that's what we want to check slash F slash R and you shouldn't have to do the slash X here but I do it anyway just out of habit you press enter and it's going to start checking the disk um, I obviously don't want to do that at the moment because it would take it a while to run but uh, that's how you would do it in the ultimate boot CD, the fast, easy way. Uh, there's a couple other things you'd want to be able to use in the ultimate boot CD to check your hard disk out. Um, under programs, uh, there is uh, disk tools. And you got some diagnostic stuff under here. You got, you know, check disk, all that stuff basically does the same thing as we just did got the Western Digital diagnostic tools um, the one I really want to show you here is HD tune and because this is a virtual disk we're probably not going to see really anything under here just like I thought um, but you'd go to that health tab and you'd see other information in here about the status um, about various smart variables and what you want to look for is a high threshold or not threshold but the high data um, data is going to tell you where um, data is going to tell you what it's currently at the threshold tells you where it's basically the cutoff point so to say and the status is you know is that an acceptable level or is it worse or in a failure state whatever uh, so that gives you some information on the smart uh, there, smart data, uh, which will collect some various things like how many times has it had to reallocate um, sectors due to bad blocks, um, how many times has it had to re spin up the drive, power on hours, things like that. Um, what you really want to look for is things like ECC errors and the um, reallocation errors. Now, if you're using a Seagate drive, just to warn you, um, smart data is virtually useless you have to actually use the Seagate utility you have to get that from their website um, because they don't push out normal smart information unlike every single other hard drive on the market uh, another thing you can do under HD tune is start an error scan you just go through hit that let it run it'll test out each block um, generally the only thing I do with HT tune as far as that goes is a quick scan I just let it go through do its thing there I have another utility altogether called Spinrite which I think does a much better job of testing individual sectors than uh, HD tune does I think it's a little bit more thorough that's why I just use HD tune as kinda like a quick diagnostic tool if I see it popping up issues uh, on site and I know it's got a bigger problem so to say uh, until next time I'll see you later